Process costing is a technique used to value work in process inventory when the items being manufactured are made in large batches or in a continuous operation. There are three technical challenges to process costing and they are the use of equivalent units, the application of a cost flow assumption such as weighted average or FIFO, and then how to keep track of multiple types of cost that may be at different levels of completion in the manufacturing process. To see how process costing works, we will work through an example, starting with some basic facts, and then I'll provide a recipe that more or less allows you to do the calculations. So let's start with an example where we're going to use a weighted average cost flow assumption and assume there's only one type of cost. We won't mention what this is for the moment, but we will come back to this later. So let's assume we have a beginning inventory that has a thousand items, which at the beginning of the period are 60% complete. Then during the period, 3,500 items are started, 4,100 items are completed, and the ending inventory is 40% complete with respect to this cost category. Note that the costs themselves consist of $18,000 of beginning inventory costs and $102,000 of costs added during the period. I think it's easiest to solve these problems if we first start by tracking the physical units. That is, the units without regard to whether they are complete or partially complete. I like to use T-accounts, so we start with a thousand items in beginning inventory, 3,500 items added, 4,100 items completed, and then we use the equation for balance of a inventory account to calculate that there are 400 items in ending inventory. The next step is to take the physical units and convert it to equivalent units. In the last slide, we squared away the physical units. Now the next thing is to take the physical units and translate them into equivalent units. The easiest translation are the completed units. By definition, completed units are 100% complete. So 4,100 physical units is equivalent to 4,100 equivalent units of completed work. Now we can do similar calculations for beginning and ending inventory. Beginning inventory is 1,000 units, and those 1,000 units are 60% complete and I show the calculation in one below, so we get 600 equivalent units. Ending inventory consists of 400 physical units, and the calculation here is 2, so 400 times 40% is equal to 160 equivalent units. And then we can calculate the amount of work added in equivalent unit terms by balancing the equivalent unit inventory, and this would work out to 3,660 units. Once we have the equivalent units squared away, the next question then is how to assign cost to these equivalent units. Well, the cost flow assumption comes into play here, and in this case we're going to use the weighted average. For so, the weighted average can be calculated by taking the total costs of 120,000 and dividing by the total number of units, 4,260, and that gives us a weighted average cost per unit of $28.17, which we can now apply to the equivalent units. Continuing from the last slide, we see that the 160 equivalent units 
when valued at $28.17 per equivalent unit equals $4,507. Similarly, the 4,100 completed units when valued at the weighted average cost of $28.17 per unit is equal to $115,493. If we decided to implement a FIFO cost flow assumption what, rather than a weighted average cost flow assumption, the physical units and equivalent unit calculations would be the same. The only difference would be that we would now have two cost layers one cost layer for beginning inventory and another cost layer for costs added during the period. So the first calculation would be, would be to determine the cost per equivalent unit for items added during the period. So here we would just take the costs added during the period and divide by the number of items added during the period this is calculation 2, and end up with $27.87 per equivalent unit. Using FIFO, then, we can value the ending inventory as 160 equivalent units at a price of $27.87. And so, looking at calculation 1 here, we get an ending value of work and process inventory of $4,459. We can simplify the calculation for the units completed by recognizing that the total amount of costs, 120,000, is distributed between the ending work and process and the amount transferred out. So we can calculate, therefore, the cost of goods manufactured, in this case calculation 2, by taking the total cost and subtracting the amount in ending inventory. When there is more than one cost category, for example, if you had a, a cost category for materials and a cost category for conversion, it's important to do the equivalent units and cost calculations for each cost category separately and then at the end you value work in process and the cost of goods manufactured by adding the two accounts together. We're now going to do an example where there are two types of costs materials and conversion costs and that material costs are all added at the start of the process. We'll use more or less the same numbers as we did in the prior example in order to speed things along. So note that the physical units are the same as in the initial example. Now the equivalent units, here we rely upon the fact that the material costs are added at the beginning of the process. And so the equivalent units shown in this example relate to materials, and since materials are added at the start, they are 100% complete. Following the same method we used before to calculate the weighted average for material costs, we take the total costs, divide by the total number of units, and get a weighted average cost per equivalent unit of $53.89. We can then use the equivalent units and the costs in order to value the ending material cost and work in process and also the value of cost of goods manufactured which would be 4100 times 5389. We do a separate calculation for the conversion costs and we'll use the numbers from the prior example, once again, since we're familiar with them and to save time. Notice then that the work in process for conversion right, follows exactly the calculations we did earlier, where we take the weighted average costs 
and apply it those to the equivalent units for both ending inventory and for units transferred out. Finally, if we were asked to value the work in process inventory, we would note that it has two components, the cost of materials and the cost of conversion. So the ending value of work in process inventory is the sum of these two costs, or $26,063. Cost of goods manufactured follows the same pattern. Cost of materials, cost of conversion, added up, and the cost of goods manufactured is $336,437.